All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I got a new engine. I got a new engine block. I got a new long block from the wrecking yard. It was $250. This is an aluminum engine. The engines that come in the Crown Vicks are iron. Um, this is not the most desirable aluminum engine, but it's still um, a very, very good block uh, for, what, for what we're using it for. This should be good to around 600 horsepower block. Um, our rotating assembly, I'm not replacing it. Uh, I'm just gonna make it work. We're gonna file the rings so that it doesn't have a failure like that engine did. And we will see how long it lasts. I'm risking a $250 engine. It's not like uh, I can't go get another one. I probably will pick up another one of these as, as a nice one becomes available so that we have it sitting around in case this engine does fail again. Um, my guess is with the power levels that we have, had I properly gapped the rings, that car would still be running and it would be running reliably. Um, but I didn't gap the rings and that caused a failure. And I'm gonna explain that to you right now why that did fail. So you have your ring and you have your gap. While this ring is in the cylinder, in the smallest part of the cylinder on a used engine, you don't want to just be measuring um, downwards slightly war because at the bottom of the cylinder, the cylinder is going to be closer to the original size. And then up top, it's going to be slightly large. So where that one failed was that towards the bottom of the cylinder. But what happened is the ring bottoms out from heat. Uh, you're boosting a car, you're adding extra heat. So that ring got hot. It got longer, it bottomed out, had no place to go. So it was basically creating extra pressure on the cylinder wall, acting as a brake holding that piston from moving up and down the cylinder very easily. And then it also was trying to go anywhere but straight. So then in that car, it split the piston right at that second ring. So, and then the bottom of the rod, just the bottom of the piston, just cocked in the cylinder, let everything go. and just started wobbling around, smashing everything and destroying stuff. Uh, all because of ring gap. So just taking a couple thousandths off of that is going to keep that from happening again. So, and this should be good. We're only gonna be pushing 400 horse. I believe that rotating assembly is going to be able to handle that. Um, and it got really expensive in my shopping cart and really delayed as far as time. Uh, so I, I just couldn't justify it. Um, it's a budget build. We're just gonna keep it a budget build and we're going to make sure our rings are gapped adequately for our turbo. And that should be enough to have a little hot rod for pretty inexpensive. So $250 block, I got about $300 in parts because I'm replacing the oil pump and the timing set. Um, and then we got gaskets. I got a high volume oil pump. You do have to buy new head bolts and new side bolts. Yeah, and those are a stretch yield bolt, just like the head bolts. Um, and, and, and that's about it. So um, for some reason, Felpro is out of stock everywhere. Um, in fact, gasket sets in general are out of stock everywhere. It's very, very odd. Um, so that being said, uh, I did get everything. Um, there's links in the description below for all the parts I'm using to build this. Um, if I run into something on the conversion from iron block to a watt block, um, I will let you know. I believe though, with this watt block, everything's gonna be just basically closer to a bolt end. Um, if you were to use the older texted block, which is a stronger block, there are a couple things you have to do. I believe it's this hole here, you have to drill. Um, but this, these blocks actually have that hole. First time for everything.
All right guys, little update on where we're at. Um, okay, so my theory on the rings being what blew this motor up, having them bottom out and then dragging the pistons down, the rod piston, pulling them off the bottom of the piston. Um, that has been 99.9% .9 debunked. Um, it's not that it's not a concern and it's not that it wouldn't have happened eventually, uh, but it, it doesn't appear that that ever was a scenario in this engine. Um, I see no scoring, I see no heat marks, I see no nothing uh, showing that this ring, and the rings look fine. Um, showing that this ring maybe had overheated like that um, and, and the gap closed. Um, usually you would get a score um, because the, the ring would have done something funky when it got to that end and there'd be scratches or something in the cylinder where those were and, and there's nothing. They look perfect still other than where they got beat up by the rods. Um, okay, so that wasn't it. Okay, so then what could it have been? Can they just not handle 400 horsepower? Um, possible, uh, but uh, there was a new um, sighting. <laughs> I don't know. They're coming up with lost, lost words there. Uh, the transmission fluid is completely smoked. Um, and it was perfect on the way there, if you remember Austin's little uh, taste for fine ATF. Um, it, it was perfect when it left, went down to the dyno shop, we did all the dyno pulls, and then we did the one asphalt pull, and that's where it blew up. Um, it was fine then, and it's really, really burnt now. So uh, obviously we had a fusible link on the dyno, which makes 100% sense on why I had such a flat power band. Um, in fact, it makes me feel really dumb that I didn't think, hey, our transmission might be slipping. But it's really hard to tell on a dyno uh, when you're doing poles like that. It, it would have been different if it would have just completely let go of the transmission, but I think it was actually just holding, and then the way those dynos work, they ease, ease their way in. Um, I, I think that's why we had such a broad, flat power band. Um, we didn't. We had a broad power band, but we it would, wouldn't have been so flat. It would have had a peak at it somewhere, um, and we had a fusible link that was kind of keeping that from happening. So I think we smoked a transmission. So um, we are going to just manual swap it now uh, with the new engine. So um, I got the clutch coming from that, which will get us to where we can get the engine and stuff back in the car, and then we'll work on doing the clutch pedal and stuff. Um, unless I decide that I want to do an internal slave bearing. Um, so I'm going to look into that before we do that. I may have to order that. I'm going to try to figure that out tonight. Um, instead of doing cable. Normally those T45s are cable. Um, and uh, I'd rather do <laughs> um, if, if I can. Um, okay, so you guys that are more experts in these things than I am, I don't know that much about them. Um, are, are these normally coated skirts? Um, the watt block was not, but this one is. Um, really weird. Um, it may, it, when I first pulled that out, I thought, oh man, it's been rebuilt. Um, and then when I looked at the bearings, I doubly thought it was rebuilt because the bearings look brand new. Even, even the bent rods bearing look brand new. Um, but uh, the bearings say 10. So I'm suspecting that they're 10 under bearings. Um, so it's kind of odd. It is standard bore though. Um, so it's possible this thing was rebuilt. But anyway, if you guys know, let me know below if you think that's factory or not. They, they sure don't look like it. Um, but they might be. They do say FOMOCO, I think. No, maybe they don't. Yeah, they do. They say FOMOCO on the inside of the skirt. So they are they are Ford pistons. Um, I don't know, um, weird. But those, those pistons were not uh, coated skirts, so. Um, as far as the conversion from iron block to aluminum block, so far there hasn't been really anything. The worst thing is the lack of the center hole for the knock sensor um, isn't in that block. It just has these two, um, which the Ford or Crown Vix didn't use. Um, so I just put my sensor on the bank one side, um, which could cause a problem on, um, that could cause a problem, but it should be tunable. Um, well, it, it may also cause a problem with the intake hitting it. I haven't seen if the intake hits it yet, but um, we should be, because we can adjust the sensitivity of that knock sensor. So um, if, if it's just a sensitivity issue being so close to those cylinders uh, when it thinks it's in the middle, um, then we'll just turn it down. The only problem is it's only really going to be reading one side, not the other. Um, so it's not going to be as good at detecting, uh, say if a, a, an injector goes bad on the side and got a cylinder running lean and detonating, it may being that it's only over here and, and maybe number two over here was running lean, it's possible that the sensor won't pick up this knock. So we don't want to turn this one down too far, um, if that makes sense. So um, that's kind of the only scenario where it would really matter. I mean, timing is timing and, and they should all uh, be even. So if you have too much timing um, or whatever and it needs to retard it, all cylinders will be knocking. So, so it, it, it shouldn't matter that it's on one side. But if you have a bad injector or something uh, where it's uh, making a cylinder go lean, um, then that, it won't be very good at detecting a cylinder over here, possibly. Um, but it, maybe it will, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just speculating. Um, so, so anyway, so that is that. Um, water pump, you have to, I believe, use your Crown Vix. Timing cover, you have to use your Crown Vix. Oil pan, you have to use your Crown Vix. All those things just bolt right on. Uh, the timing cover bolts on. If you're using a texted block, there's a, there's a little bit of an obstacle I read about um, with a bolt hole that you just have to put uh, some sealer in. But uh, as, as far as if you're just doing watt block, it all fits. Uh, the heads are the same, they're P71. They're both P71s, so um, they, they're the same head. Uh, manifolds, you have to use your Crown Vix. Um, I'm gonna have to get mine out. I'm gonna have to be really careful getting them out. My bolts are very, very rusty. You can't even see the threads anymore. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut my nuts off. Um, that way I can get my manifolds off and then I can try to extract the studs without having to weld them like we did on the other one here. So um, 
So that being that, I said, uh, thanks for watching. We will see you again soon, and we will hopefully be getting this motor in the car with a five-speed on it.